Warning, this podcast contains extremely bad parenting. Mm-hmm. All the best. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the SC9 TV podcast for Once Upon a Time, Season 5, Episode 5, Dreamcatcher. I'm your host, Dom. With me, my co-host, Nikki. Hello. And my co-host, Rachel. Hello. How's it going, ladies? It's going. Not too bad. It's... <laughs> Threw out my back the other day, so... That's good. That my medication. cake. Right? I did make I did make cake. I is, you. is that how you threw your back out? Was making no. cake? No. <laughs> okay, so the two are not not no correlation to each other. No, 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 they're not related. Yeah, I'm. If I was to cook a cake, I would make one so massive that lifting it would cause my back to go out. So yeah, it probably would. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So would would you ladies think of this episode? I we got more backstory of what happened to them than. Yeah. A lot more, which is nice. I up until this episode, I've had a lot of problems with this season that I I really didn't realize until this episode, and it's <laughs> it's it's the whole format of the flashbacks and stuff. Like you guys noticed it, I guess right away. You were jumping on, oh, another curse. Uh, I was like, but that's a staple of the series, and I like it. And what and I realized how much it wasn't working in the first four episodes until I saw this one, and. It's so what it what it came down to for me was they've exhausted their past. Like almost almost all the characters, the main characters, they've exhausted their past history to a point where the only way to continue using the flashback format that they are that they use is to have this curse. But which to me is okay. So I'm not complaining about that, but it's the knowing what happens before it happens that didn't really work well, right? Because you know, oh, Emma's going to turn into the Dark One and Merlin didn't save and, like, you know, all this stuff. And so, uh, you know, it's like knowing all that and the, it's like all everything that's going on right now seems irrelevant. But now that we kind of caught up and seeing that Merlin was actually free, because that was never mentioned before, and seeing, you know, Merlin out and about and being a, a person and doing things, now I'm interested in the flashback stuff. So, I love a Mer- I love how they portray Merlin. He's hilarious. He is. <laughs> he has this, like, sar- way... sarcastic way about him, and yeah. it just cracks me up. Well, I mean, Merlin was always kind of sarcastic. He was always eccentric in a way. But the way I explained it to my husband was that, why did they cast a hot black guy when... Every Merlin I've seen in the past is a scraggly old man. With a big old beard. <laughs> They're playing with my heartstrings. <laughs> right. I mean, the, when we talked about uh, the end of last season, like our our top picks or whatever, I, I kind of went with that. You know, me, I mm-hmm. went with, you know, an older person, but not too old. You know, I didn't go like Christopher Lloyd old, which, <laughs> by the way, would have been an amazing Merlin. Oh, but, God. Yeah. But I went with the theme that they have been, you know, casting people from Lost. And, uh, you know, I went with... Uh, um, the actor who played John Locke, mm-hmm. and uh, in my head canon, that was the best Merlin that you could possibly ever have. Um, but having this and, and being, um, you know, a, a different, not only a different race or whatever, but you know, a different age and stuff mm-hmm. that we didn't expect. Totally, um, you know, is, is I think it's it's more fresh for the the show. I love it. Yeah, I do too. And now, that, and we also found out that he's actually been a tree for a thousand years. Yeah, mm-hmm. for much longer than 15. But the, oh, yeah, much longer than what um, Arthur thought. Arthur, or, or Arthur told him. So it must have been, you know, he had he lied for a reason. Well, Just no. to say, oh, he hasn't, he hasn't no, been he, for very long. He, he didn't. See, that. The, that's more of the, the background that we need, though. He didn't lie. He spoke to Merlin, right? Arthur is not thousands of years old. So... When when this this when Merlin was turned into a tree, you know whatever it was forever ago, because this this dark one we're assuming is not Rumple. No. Right. So this predates Rumple, and Arthur does not predate Rumple. No. So. I have a feeling Merlin that had to have gotten free at some point because he also 
got in contact with Emma. We've seen this. Emma's not over 900 years old. Well, it could have been a, like, an illusion kind of thing. Maybe he had some kind of powers. I don't know. Maybe. I don't. The only other thing that I can think of is maybe Merlin can time travel. Maybe he can. Maybe he got he got turned tree, but he got banished or something like. Part of him was. Well, I'm banished. saying that in the the past before he was he yeah. he was he foresaw events and traveled ahead to prophesize to Arthur and to prophesize to yeah. Emma well, and then he, went well, back and then got trapped in the, in the tree. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe he went ahead and future told Emma and went back and got trapped in the tree. Yeah. So, yeah, it's possible. It sounds like he can't time travel because he goes. It's just like riding a bike. And Charmin was like, how do you know about bikes? <laughs> yeah. So he travel. he's a time traveler. Yeah. So he's um would would you guys think about the masked dark one? Who who do you do you, it's masked I, for a reason. The masked for a reason think, I feel like I it's someone it's his, we know. I think it's his long lost love. Uh, yeah. Obvi- it's gotta be because like, you, went to- you you destroyed my love. Didn't say I want my her love back. her, said my, yeah. my love. And he, I want her back. Goes to her. kill the dark one. And goes, I can't do it. Cries a little. Dark one didn't kill him. Just took his tear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Turned him into a tree, so. Yep. So uh, this the, was the pre... Tear, the tear is what casts the spell. Yeah. Yep. It is, so... is the tear of love's lost. So it's... Let's say he's roughly got turned into a tree a thousand years. This has to be before Uzo, who, um, you so know, though. Rumpel got his powers from. So, because otherwise they would, Uzo. or Zozo, yeah. Zo, whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I'm thinking that it was before him. Maybe the one before. Yeah, because when we we saw Zozo last was uh, last season, um, um, when yeah. he went into the. Yeah. Sorcerer's Apprentice Room uh, to try to steal the, the box. And uh, it was specifically, the Sorcerer said, you know, the Dark One's before you. So we know Zozo was not the first. So, you know, there there have been other ones. And, and I believe, yes, you're right. This has to predate, predate Zozo. Yeah, I don't think Zozo was, was the Dark One for very long. It doesn't seem I like... Think so either. It, because Rump, if Rumpel's 800 years old and he was, and Merlin was Rumpel turned was into it... more than 100. He was like 900, wasn't he? 800. 800. 800. Okay. So as to say, if like if Merlin was turned into a tree a thousand years ago, so maybe he was maybe for a hundred years, he was, you know, maybe shorter. We don't know. Yeah. But it doesn't seem maybe. like he had a very long, very long stint. Well, I don't think he was very smart either. So. I don't think so. <laughs> he was a he dumb dark like one. This. He was a dumb dark one. <laughs> there you go. He was the yeah. dunder. Um, but, you know, we learn all this with Emma using uh, a Dreamcatcher to see this. The Dreamcatcher that was used was was the one that she had in Camelot. Was that Neil's or was that just a random Dreamcatcher? Not, the one, a... not the one from from Storybrooke, the one in the, the flashback. No, I think um, it was random. It's the same I, one that yeah. was on her desk. But, yeah, uh, it's the same Dreamcatcher she used while she was in Storybrooke. It's just, well, I one... don't think it's Neil's. It, the only reason why Hook knew what it was is because Neil gave him one that was similar Okay, I thought I thought it was the one. Mm-mm. No. Okay. I like I like the the nod to Neil. I, I love like all. There's so many nods. There to were so many. Yeah, there was. Yeah. There was a lot. Mm-hmm. I love it because uh, Neil is probably one of the most tragic deaths that we've had to deal with. Oh yeah. So, to to not forget Neil is great. To just keep that little seed of reminder and. Still feel like Neil's coming back in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, I never, I never got attached to Neil's character. No, either did I. But I, it's, it's still saddening. It's sad, but I was just like, okay, good, bye. I mean, Balefire hung out in Neverland <laughs> for you know eight hundred years, so he survived that long. He can't go out like this. He's got to come back, and uh, I, I don't know because. We we saw we saw that um they they tried to use um the tear to free Merlin in the the past here, right? Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. they tried to get Regina, uh-huh. right? And uh, that didn't really work out that well. And it, it was the it the tear. Well, it just wasn't fresh. Completely. It wasn't fresh and it wasn't strong enough. 
Right. Yeah. And it's not because her love was false. It's because she has new love. Mm-hmm. Which she got over it. Kind of not would really be got the over reason if, if Emma was even capable, you know, of it, um, Emma's would not have worked because she had Hook. Yeah. You know? So, um, she does some, uh, some really bad parenting. Yeah, and when we first saw it, before we saw the flashback to what happened, I was like, way to break his heart, Violet, you stupid, dumb... I was legit... Then you were brat? Was, no, because, like, <laughs> I can't say I was mad at, at Violet, but... So what started popping into my mind was, okay, so based on, you know, your society and your upbringing and, and different things like that, and it's a lot of situation and things that, you know, it's like, that's your opinions and first impressions and you know all that means a lot and i was like something that was there and you know the father's influence because we saw how the father treated henry in the past and it's like oh you're a writer you're you're not a knight you yeah can't, you can't be with my daughter so instantly henry thought it had something to do with that and then yeah. when we see in present day and the violet's horse runs off and henry's you know going this this whole episode trying to like redeem the horse because he doesn't have any memories of Camelot. He doesn't know no. what happened. He just found this new girl. So it's that puppy dog love all over again. It's starting fresh from the first time. The father now likes Henry. So mm-hmm. he's more accepting. Oh, you will be a fine knight someday, good sir. And, you know, here, let me, let me, I'll take the horse. You, you two enjoy the festivities. So it's just like, it was, all, that's what it was to me. I didn't think anything of it. I just thought it was the father, you know? Mm-hmm. So then when we learn what happens with Emma, I, oh my God, I can't even tell you the roller coaster I went on. Does Emma, I wonder if Emma still has her heart. I guess we might find out next episode. Yeah. Oh, she said she'd get it back after she did this little oh, come thing on now. for her. Yeah, uh-huh. But I mean, but I mean, I mean, a lot could happen, like with Merlin being out now, but I mean, Emma wasn't the dark one then. She probably still is very true to her word. Mm. I don't know. Well, she's, She's she's starting to turn. Oh, she's starting. starting. She's, she she in in present day she's full blown dark one. Well, yeah, pre- but I mean this is like her turning flashback. point. Yeah, this was her turning point. She's using excuses on why she's using the black magic, mm-hmm. the dark magic. She's using every excuse under the sun she's, as she's, to why she has to use it. And I don't even want to say it's an excuse. She's justifying it in her own head. Just yeah, because an excuse is is justifying it to other people. Well, Justification. She has been in, in her own head is a little bit different. Well, she has been trying to use some of the excuses to Regina and why she's using it. Yeah. And so... I, I feel like it's not, more for Regina's, her than it is for Regina. I know. Regina's not buying it because Regina's been there. Yep. She's not buying it. Her bullshit. <laughs> but I, I love when, um, when Gold calls her out on... Uh, or no, uh, Regina calls her out on uh, orchestrating the, the horse debacle. It's like you you did this to to win back. Like I know I've I've gone down the path of evil, and I was just like, that seems like a very rumple thing to do. Yeah, but so. she's like, I'm doing the best. I was doing the best for you know what I thought was best for Henry. She says it sounds just like my mom. Yep, because we saw through all the flashbacks in season one, two, and three how much Rumple was involved in orchestrating everybody's you know past. To, see, to make sure this curse happened. Like, he went above and beyond, you know, th- messing around with Cinderella, you know, as mm-hmm. the fairy godmother, which is still my favorite iteration of <laughs> Rumpel ever, you know, and, you know, all the way up to, you know. Yeah. You know, all the main characters. But they're still a part of her, obviously. Otherwise, she, we wouldn't see, like, the whole entire episode when she was the dark one from the present time. She Every time you looked at her, she looked like she was about ready to just start burst out crying. Yeah. Like every single thing she did caused her so much pain that she was just going to burst in tears the whole entire time. Yeah. And I would notice that because I was like, either they put really red uh, eyeliner on her or she's going to cry at any moment. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So there's still that, there's still Emma, the, you know, Emma we know is still there, but for some reason she can't. Let it show as much as she wants it to. Let it show. Let it show. No. There's still there's still something she's hiding and she's trying to get them to go to a certain point to basically probably clear this whole thing up. I mean the stuff that she's hiding is becoming less and less because we had, you know, 
uh, Regina and company go exploring Emma's basement by using Henry's shirt to get into the house. His scarf? A scarf. A scarf, yeah. Yeah. I was half expecting it to be like Harry Potter colors or something like that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I I mean <clears throat> I don't know. It seems like little slip ups that Emma's doing, but they're not calculated slip ups. Like she almost wants them the only person that was allowed in her house would be Henry and she's you know, and just little things that Maybe she's she, not subconsciously slipping up, but she's doing it to, like, breadcrumbs. I 100% no, breadcrumbs think trip. she's still orchestrating something. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, of course she is. But, I mean, like, she legit looked like when Regina came out to her and was like, you did this? Because Henry saw it, I saw it, we saw the dream catcher, and she was just like, wait, what? Yeah, well, that. Yeah. She was completely, like, blown away. Yeah, I think and that was not part of her plan. But no. them stumbling on Excalibur in the basement was... 100% part of her plan. Yeah, she didn't uh -huh. care about that. No. Which was kind of cool because Belle's the one that figured out that, you know, Excalibur and the dagger are the same thing. Oh, Belle held that dagger close to her heart for a long time. Yep. Yeah, with the... And she noticed the... Um... I mean, I I thought it would have been Hook because Hook is the one that's hunted, you know, the Dark One for ages. Yeah. So, but... Well, he knew other things. Yeah. But yeah. Belle definitely makes sense, too, so... Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I like giving Belle something to do <laughs> than just pying well, over what do you missing mean? Rumpel. What, when, when she hands Merlin the book, and he, he's like, oh, you know, basically, you're a smart girl. She's like, finally. <laughs> Someone notices. Yeah. It's kind of like, that's like the cumulation of the whole entire thing. Finally, someone realizes that I have some use here. And instead of just being the damsel in distress, you know, with gold the whole entire time, you know? Yeah. So maybe she's going to have a bigger part. Mm -hmm. Which would be um, good. Yeah. Uh, I love how much, though, that they're they're incorporating Merida into the storyline. Like, based on the first episode and, and everything she was in, she did not seem that important to the story. No, she didn't. It seemed like she was a one-off in the first episode. Like, oh, hey, I did this. I'm God. I'm going to go help my brothers now. Yeah. Yeah. And just okay. the way they tied her, you know, I, I've grown to like the character a lot more. Um, Nikki, I think, uh, you're finally coming into terms with, uh, or, or they're growing into your standards, I should say, with, with her appearance. Yeah, like, her outfit looks less vibrant, and her hair, her hair. is less vibrant, so, yeah. I mean, she, she's more realistic now, she's less of a cartoon. To yeah. me, it seems like what they, whatever they did in, uh, the first episode with her, uh, the, the, um, the filter, the saturation was just turned way too high. I was going to say probably maybe the lighting or something. Was yeah, it's it it probably the color balance and stuff. Because they do a lot with the green screens, as you guys know. And, and in certain yeah. cases, it's not exactly a green screen. They they use green, blue, and purple. Um, like a violet on this set quite a lot. Like a bright pink or purple. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the purple you usually see more in scenes with like um, Zelina. You know, when green skin, they can't exactly use green screen. Um, <laughs> So. Should be his lips and eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it seems like ever since Zelina made it onto the show, they switched from a blue screen over to um, using the violet screen, which I've seen in almost everything since. And I, I guess that allows you to have like blue and green uh, on mm -hmm. the screen. And you, you've seen that now a lot more in the dresses and stuff. So having like Merida in there that uses a bright colored dress and stuff, you can't exactly, you know, use those colors either. So. I don't yeah, know. If they used a blue screen, she'd just be a talking head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's there's ways around that from the the technical aspect. Like, you yeah. can create a mask to put over that kind of stuff to block the filter out, but that's just a lot of extra work. That yeah, doesn't a lot need of to extra work. Um, but anyway, um, uh, Merida, she she tries to uh, overcome the uh, the dark one, dark one spell. It didn't really work out for her, did it? No, not at all. So. How do you think uh, Merit is getting it free? Uh, I think like she might. I think she might use Rumple against Emma. I th yeah. She might. Ev she might convince Rumple to get her heart back, or somebody because, else yeah, might realize end. that Merida is under her spell and be like, "Oh, I'm gonna fix her right, Jiffy, right now." 
Well, didn't she say something to Rumpel like, you know, you're going to help get me? You, yeah, you're yeah. going to help me take down. I don't think she one. realizes um, how she's going to do it quite yet. No. I do like her interact, her and Merlin's interaction. She is just like, what, since she got released, she's like, I got to get the wisps. He's like, the wisps are just going to lead you to your death. Straight out point. She's like, what? <laughs> and here she thought, you know, lead her to her brothers and stuff. But. Yeah. I don't know, but the, the sword fighting between uh, Merida and Rumpel was probably the highlight of this episode for me. <laughs> I love that she's, she's such she's such a bitch, but I loved it. She's not really. She's being forceful. And yeah, aggressive. exactly. That's she what I'm needs, saying. She's she needs mean. to get this job done in order to save herself and by doing that she kind of has to be a little cruel of course like, and but i love it like, the way that just, they do it but she, at the same time she's being helpful because she's like here you have a bug leg here have a fucking staff i know oh, right now you can walk now let's See, sword fight I'm, that's not stopping you she's like that's not stopping you what's stopping mm-hmm. you is you you know see i I'm, i know and this is even showing how much more like when we were talking about this uh last podcast and over the last couple episodes, especially at the end of last season, how being the dark one was so tied to his personality, to Rumpel's personality. Because now we, we see him back to being the coward. You know, like, that's not been in his personality for the longest time. And now that the dark one is gone, you would expect him to have 800 years of experience and confidence being th- this person who does not know what cowardice is anymore. And I don't it think has it's not so much, influenced him at all. I don't think it's so much he re- went back to be, well, of course, you know, he could have. But um, it feels like to me that he is. Um, he's feeling he's weak. So feeling he's the loss. Weak. He's feeling all the loss that he just lost. I mean, he lost power. He lost Bell. He lost everything. And he's feeling that loss. He's, feeling, he's throwing himself a pity party. And his heart is basically completely wiped from mm-hmm. everything. It's neither good nor bad right now. No, and he's he's throwing himself a little pity party. Yeah. And so once he gets over that, I think he might re- might regain some of that confidence and stuff. It's there. He's just you saw it. Yeah, yeah you saw it. I mean, it. It, yeah, it's not like he's forgotten everything that goes went on the last nine hundred years because when when Chip gets threatened, you know. Yeah, he he's I'm gonna just continue to call that cup Chip and not chip. a chipped cup. It is Chip. Yeah. I don't care what chip. anybody says. <laughs> he's just throwing himself a pity party. He'll eventually come out of it. I always, I always wondered what happened to like Chip, the the cup in the Disney version. Like, he went back to being a little boy. Yeah, I understand that, but like, was he missing part of his like brain or like what? No, he no, didn't his... have a front tooth. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. Okay. His, his other, one of his front teeth was gone. Yeah, and well, his name was Chip, so you know. Mm-hmm. He he eventually grew up to become a rescue ranger. He a squirrel. Yeah. He turned into a squirrel. <laughs> Merlin cast the spell and turned him into a squirrel. God. We've seen Merlin turn himself into a squirrel in the Sword and the Stone. It, it can yes. happen. Along with Prince Arthur. <laughs> I have to watch that movie. Oh, it's such I've a good movie. You ha- yeah, I just went back recently and watched the uh, the animal battle scene. Like when they just start turning into him in... Uh, Madame Mim. Madame Mim, yeah. That, oh my god, that's the best scene in the whole movie, so... Um, did you guys? Did anyone else notice that they have Corella's uh, car for sale? No, oh. I didn't. Yeah, it's when they're walking down out, and they're in Story Brick, and they're I can't remember. It's like one of the very first scenes, and they're walking out. And then if you look, they're walking, you know, on the sidewalk under like whatever it was up top. Yep, Corella's car is right there, and it says for sale on it. <laughs> that is awesome. Wow. That's okay. awesome. I was like. Wait a minute! I oh, that's Corella's car. They, they, they're trying to sell it. How are they going to sell it when no one can get it? <laughs> no one can get in or out of uh, Storybrook. Who's going to buy it in Storybrook? No one. But I just thought it was hilarious. Yeah, um, I just want to throw this out there for the people that are interested. I'm not spoiling it, so you don't have to go anywhere. But a um, lot of returning cast members have been announced for the 100th episode some of which are a big spoiler surprise so if you don't want to know try to avoid that at all costs i will not be revealing it so don't worry um but it's out there if you are interested in looking 
So uh, I'm excited for at least two of them. I will say that much. At least two. At, at least, least two. two. There's a bunch, but I, only two. Well, because only, only two matter. I think there were four that were announced, and two of which are the ones that I care about. So what I'm I'm curious is when are they going to um, find Emma's large shed full of dreamcatchers? And if that is everyone's memory, that's yeah. in Starbrick. That's a lot. So that's a lot of dream. Catchers. That's a lot of dream. Well, there was a lot of dream catchers in there. There were a lot. It and was, she did. It reminded me if you've seen the movie Seven, which I know Nikki over here has not seen. It reminds me of the movie Seven when they walk into that apartment that's just full of air fresheners, and yeah. there's just thousands of air fresheners everywhere. It reminded me of that. You just and open it up, and there's just movie, dream how? catchers everywhere. It's not. It's not. It's it's the best movie ever. If Dom says it's good, you know it's bad. Once Upon a Time is a really good show. He says Saw is good. and Once Upon a Time is a really good show. I just had no, Rachel shoot see, herself in the foot. No. You, she said movie. No, she That's said true. if Dom says it's good, then it's not. That, that, was, that was her statement. Whatever. I liked this show before you liked this show, so I'm not sure about so. it. I don't think so. I watched it the day it aired. Me too. So then you couldn't I, have liked it before me. I did because I'm I was two hours ahead of I lived in a different time zone. I left I watched it before you did. It still airs the same time. <laughs> time is relative. No. Next episode is called The Bear and the Bow. So, okay. So we're going to see a bear shooting a bow. Prediction. We're going to see a bear, and we're going to see a bow, but not a bear with a bow. No. Bear is good. Who is the bow? I mean, who's the little bear? Little John. Bear? It's Little John. <laughs> it's Little John. Yeah, it's Blue. Little John well, and Robin Hood I, running through the forest. Oodalali, oodalali, golly, what a day. No, I, I, I think it has a lot to do with Merida's story. Oh, of course it does. It's so it's we don't know related to her about. story. I mean, it was her mom, right? And yeah, it was her mom. Brave, so and her little brothers got turned into bears. For See, to me, like Camelot has, uh, m like it feels more like uh, in in terms of like um, type of storytelling, it feels a lot like um, uh, Sherwood Forest to me. Yeah. So I feel like they could have done more with the Robin Hood story and had like Robin Hood and Camelot, you know, like they're they're all close so they're nearby, so they know each other. I would have liked something like that, but um, there's still well, a few episodes that you never know. Yeah. Yeah, there is. Anyway, we did. Okay. The Bear and the Bow. In a Camelot flashback, a chance encounter with Merlin, David, Hook, and Bell gives Merida new hope in her quest to save her brothers from the. Usurping. Where, where are you reading that from? From the... Usurping. Usurping? Yeah. From the slurping clans of Dunbrock. <laughs> Usurping <laughs> clans of Dunbrock. That's what I said. The slurping clans of Dunbrock. Uh, unwilling to leave anything up to fate, Merida brings Belle along on a dangerous journey that culminates with an invaluable lesson in bravery. Uh, in storybook, Regina, Mary, Margaret, and David discover to 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 he to to what, what's that word? Fuck. To discover fuck spell. <laughs> no, to discover oh the sorry the the spell that would allow one of Merlin's chosen to communicate with him. But when Arthur fails to reach the missing sorcerer, the heroes grow suspicious. Meanwhile, Emma commands Merida to kill Belle in hopes of forcing Mr. Gold's heroic transformation. This is this is in present day. Okay, so this isn't even a flashback. Mm -hmm. um, with Merida unable to disobey Emma's orders, Gold must find the courage to fight for Belle's life or risk losing her forever. Well, we already know Merlin is really pissed off at Arthur, so... Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do with that broken sword? Uh, he's really pissed off. Oh, man, yeah. Well, I mean... Is he Arthur, didn't is, do what is, he is, wasn't... Is Merlin mad at him because the sword is broken? I mean, because no. Arthur found the sword broken. It's not no, his he, fault. He, no. he's, mad that, he's mad that he didn't take the role he should have. 
he didn't go the route he should have to be the boy that he's mad that he became the villain yeah he's mad that he took this road of obsession over this and didn't become a good leader he's pissed off he gave him this you can only go so far with predictions what that person does with it is a whole nother story that means merlin shouldn't be mad he can only be disappointed okay well maybe he's disappointed but he's a little pissed He's really disappointed. He's, <laughs> super, he's way more than he's disappointed. He's disappointed too, but yeah, he's mad because of the way Arthur's been going on, like going about things, he like betraying people. Fingers and fix it. He's out of the fucking tree now. Maybe. Well, he doesn't want it. He's there's, there's, well, you know what? I don't care what he wants. If he's he out of the tree now, fingers and fix things. If he's out of the tree now, he should have fixed Emma, but clearly something happened. So oh, he has. Well, to fi- well, like he said, you know, he, he can fix it, but he could fix her. But does she want to be fixed? Yes. Because it takes it takes both, right? So I really, it's just as I much really, as it really, is. really hope that Excalibur gets forged, and at the last second something happens, and all the light gets snuffed out. That would that would make for a great mid season cliffhanger. Well, we already know that. Well, right now it's not together. We know that much. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. For the mid season, have it come together yeah. and snuff out all the light, because they said that it could either destroy all the light or all the darkness. What better way to end the mid-season is to destroy all the light in the world and leave leave the world in chaos for, for the next season. And I don't know. We'll have to go I have to the a underworld. feeling something else will happen. I don't think it's going to snuff out all the so light. And what I don't you're think saying, it's going to snuff out all the dark. Something weird's going to happen. The dark's going to get snuffed out. And when we come back from mid-season, everybody's going to be wearing night vision goggles. <laughs> Nikki, where can the people find you? <laughs> they can very find me. S- all of you. <laughs> they can find me on Twitter at Lady Venom twenty four L A D Y V E N O M twenty four. Rachel, where can the people find you? They can find me at Twitter at Savannah seventeen and on Twitch at Savannah. Excellent. You can find me down below here at Phenomenon P H E N O M E D O M. Do 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 do. Phenomenon. You did find that. See that hoodie that. Character right? <laughs> I, I will not be wearing that hoodie. Uh, <laughs> I'm Facebook. You you can also find us and others on Facebook, Gmail, G Plus, Twitter, <laughs> and right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite Jack Skeleton shows. <laughs> favorite TV shows. Till next week! Don't be shooting any bears with bows. You're supposed to shoot the bears with arrows, not the bows, because I don't think the bows can do that. No, no, you hold the arrows, and you put the string on the bow and release... <laughs> you put the string against the arrow and release the bow. That's how that And you works. release your tongue. No, you release the bow. And then the bow goes flying. Uh-huh. Do not hit bears, because that will only agitate them. (laughs) And then the only way, the only way to get away is if you give them a picnic basket. If if you don't give them a picnic basket, they can have angry poops all over your face. All over. Mm -hmm. And don't you dare have a picnic basket. It better be a picnic basket. Basket? Basket? (laughs) Basket? (laughs) Basket?